Last week, we brought you to Connecticut for the christening of the USS Idaho, the first U.S. Navy christening of an Idaho in more than 100 years. The new boat is a Virginia-class submarine, so in short, it's a warship. They're built to take out enemy ships, collect intelligence, and support special operations. It'll hold a 132-person crew, but today we're focused on the people of the past, the USS Idaho crew from the 1940s. Andrew Bartline shows us they were front and center for one of the biggest moments in world history. In an oversized Atlantic Coast warehouse. A building submarines like we have never built before. Nationwide crowds on deck for a celebration. Idaho's contribution to national security. More than half of the commissioned Navy fleet owes them one word, nuclear. Gives us an unfair advantage against every potential adversary. And the latest crew? The gem of the fleet. Will pilot the designation long overdue. So if I could get a big round of applause for that. For nearly 80 years, the name's been dormant. It's high time we give honor and again christen another USS Idaho. A name that could never be lost. With his buddies. That's the truth. He's in a scrapbook. Here and here. Saved through Eileen. Yeah. Her husband Al Wurdzek served on the previous USS Idaho in World War II. Al was one of four living crew members invited to the new ship's christening. It would have been really great if he could have made it, so. Al's son, Chris, says he died nearly three years ago, a hero. He was, but he never thought he was. Humble strength always has a source. Can't get away from Idaho. <laughs> it's where Al's parents met and married. It's where Al trained after enlisting. It's the boat where Al served. They kept track of of their kills, their submarines. Well worn from battle. This is the one time that it did get damaged enough to have to go get repaired. But never once was she sunk. The Japanese claimed to have sank her three times or more. They'd get patched up and they were right back in the fight. A full embodiment of the name down to the final second of World War II. When the surrender happened with Japan, they had the surrendered signing on the Missouri battleship and they brought the Idaho in and parked it right next to the Missouri. Kind of as a, I thought you said you sank the Idaho, it's right there. A piece of history Chris pulled from the scrapbook for himself. This is to certify that Al Wardzek was aboard the USS Idaho in Sagami Wan and Tokyo Bay during the initial phase of the occupation of Japan and the signing of the terms of the Japanese surrender. And it's signed by the captain and first officer. Big shoes to fill. Pretty cool. It's a task now left up to the next Idaho crew, and they know it. The BB-42, the battleship? Even to sailor Robert Bossian. Oh yeah, it came with a bunch of surprises. Proudly from the panhandle. I like being part of the Idaho the state and being part of the crew uh, makes me feel a little bit more prideful that I know what the namesake means. I know how to carry myself as an Idahoan and bring that to the boat and share Idaho with the rest of the crew. It's history that doesn't fade. Once again, USS Idaho. And protected by former Governor Dirk Kempthorne. The seamless connection between crew and citizens is amazing. Kempthorne shows them what's left of the last USS Idaho, what can still be seen, felt, touched. This is one of the spots they visited on, on, in June of 23, the Veterans Memorial Cemetery. They went and visited your husband. They did. Isn't that amazing? These sailors had never met Al or his family. I'm just honored to be part of it. Even down to the smallest details, there's Idaho, yeah! loud and proud. And it just brought all those, all those feelings back, yeah. A lifetime later, the Wurdzicks know they can't shake it. No, no, it keeps coming back. And may she endure forever. Esto Perpetua. 
The USS Idaho is still due a full year of sea trials and then officially the commissioning ceremony. And at that point, the submarine will join the U.S. Navy fleet. So step three of five down, some really cool connections. And his son also lives in Idaho now, too. Oh, of course. There's always an Idaho connection. There's so many, they can't get away from it. Well, it seems like a really unique experience that you and our photojournalist Kevin Esslinger were able to be a part of this weekend. And obviously, they don't do these very often. Yeah, and there's actually a piece of it that adds to how interesting or, or unique, I should say. So earlier in the week, we brought the story of that tribal blessing as well. So when that happened, a representative or representatives, I should say, from the Shoshone, Bannock, and Nez Perce tribes, they flew out to Connecticut as well to give their blessings to the boat. And if you think that sounds unique, you would absolutely be right. General Dynamic Electric Boat is the private company contracted with the U.S. Navy to build these boats. The christening is a big piece of that partnership, too. But the tribal blessing, that's not in the traditional script. Leaders from Idaho tribes flew to Connecticut and to share their cultural songs, wisdom, even a peace pipe with the crew. You can see it right there. And each of those moments had deep, often religious meanings. But it nearly did not happen. In our interview with former Governor Dirk Kempthorne, he actually pulled back the curtain a little bit. There initially was reluctance, if not pushback, by Electric Boat to let us bring the Native American tribes for the blessing. But we, we were tenacious, that's Idaho. We keep pushing. And so finally, they said, yes, you can do this. Last night, at a banquet put on by Electric Boat, they came up and said, that's never happened before on this shipyard, and that is probably one of the most meaningful things we have ever, ever experienced. And they said, we had shipyard workers that handled the steel, you know, big fellas that had tears in their eyes based on what was happening. Multiple people at Electric Boat, they corroborated that with me as well. Electric Boat has never had any such blessing of their boats going to the U.S. Navy. And what you see here is a blessing offered to the crew as well. Kempthorne says he pushed for this because the boat is going to represent all of Idaho. So it should represent all of Idaho. We have a full story on this blessing and word from a Nez Perce tribal leader on our website at ktvb.com. And it is powerful, Joe, even from a historical standpoint. I'm not sure if you know this. I learned it from that Nez Perce leader. They actually had a battle with the United States at Whitebird. Now they're in Connecticut supporting that same government yeah. they had once fought. Wow. Time changes everything. Uh, it's, yeah. I, I really appreciate what Governor Kempthorne said, too, where if this is going to represent Idaho, it needs to represent all of Idaho. And, of course, before Idaho was Idaho, the tribes were here. Yeah, and that theme of Idaho just not going away, being tenacious, not leaving, same thing there. He wouldn't give up and got their way, and it seemed he proved them wrong. Well, enjoyed seeing yours and Kevin's work uh, from Connecticut over the weekend into today. So appreciate that, Andrew. 208, we'll be right back after this.